Hello, I'm Michael Levi, Senior Architect with CA Technologies. Today we will be discussing how to configure the web application browser agent in CA App Experience Analytics. I think a great place to start is with an overview of the browser agent. The browser agent lets you monitor web page low performance metrics. This includes metric calculations for web pages, metric calculations for AJAX requests, single page applications, and soft page navigation. Next, we will discuss the process flow of the browser agent in CA App Experience Analytics. All data comes into App Experience Analytics Collector. Kafka is a message bus. Raw data goes through Logstash into Jarvis Elasticsearch for message in Kafka. App Experience Analytics App Server reads message from Kafka and reads message to aggregator, such as the app ID and other dimensions. Aggregation is computed for hundreds of dimensions, then written to RDMBS, PostgreSQL, or Oracle. User queries are processed by App Server and either goes to DB or if pulling raw data, then it goes to Elasticsearch. Data Studio is Kibana embedded in the App Experience Analytics UI. It's important to note all these components are hosted in App Experience Analytics SaaS offering. We are mentioning them here for on premise customers as well as to highlight that CA is leveraging open source industry standard ELK stack. If you choose to host App Experience Analytics on premise, the collector, also known as Digital Experience Collector, can be used to fuel both CA App Experience Analytics and CA Application Performance Management by running Logstash plugins for each. This enables a single, common JavaScript snippet to provide both performance metrics and behavior analytics. In this case, you could control settings in DXE.properties and a corresponding dot .profile. CA APM is not depicted on this current diagram. Now that you understand the process flow, let's discuss some of the browser agent properties that are used for monitoring and metric collection. Here are just a few of the properties that are used. Created, this property is the date and time when the profile was created. Last updated, this property is the date and time when the profile was last updated. Browser agent enabled, the property toggles the browser agent monitoring. Page load metrics enabled, the property toggles the capture of page load metrics. JS function metrics enabled, the property toggles the capture of JavaScript function metrics. For more information on these browser agent properties, browser metrics, and more, visit CA's DocOps page. Now we'll have a demonstration on how to configure web application browser agent in CA App Experience Analytics. We begin by logging into CA App Experience Analytics. Clicking on the Manage Apps icon takes us to the Manage Apps page. We already have a TixChange app configured, which I will explain. Notice, if this is your first time to this page, you will need to click on the New App icon to create a managed app. Clicking on the Web App tab takes us to the Web App configuration. Notice the JavaScript snippet it created for you. We can see the tenant ID, app ID, and app key. If you want to learn more about adding the snippet to your application, you can watch the help video. We copy the snippet by clicking on the Copy to Clipboard button. In our application, the include top.jsp file is included in each of the web pages. We will add the snippet to this file so it is included in each of the web pages. We paste the snippet in the head section of the web page. Now we will edit the profile for the web app. Since we want to collect browser metrics, data collector is set to on. From here you can select or clear performance options, and optionally specify threshold values. The browser agent uses thresholds where browser metrics may not be created. Enter a value in milliseconds for metric frequency or leave the default. Metric frequency specifies the interval in which the browser agent metrics are dispatched to the collector from the browser. When the value is set to 0 milliseconds, the browser agent dispatches its metrics in real time. Your performance options include geolocation. This toggles browser agent geolocation monitoring. It is important to note, if enabled, this property provides a confirmation pop-up to allow or deny geolocation. Error reporting toggles the capture of JavaScript errors, AJAX errors, or both. JavaScript toggles the capture of JavaScript errors. AJAX toggles the capture of AJAX errors. Browser logging toggles the logging of messages in the browser console. DOM change timeout specifies the maximum timeout for soft page DOM observation. The default is 10,000 milliseconds, and the range is 200 milliseconds to 15,000 milliseconds. DOM change polling interval specifies the soft page DOM change polling interval. This value must be less than the DOM change timeout value. The default is 100 milliseconds, and the range is 50 milliseconds to 1,000 milliseconds. Click Save, or Save Current Settings as a new profile. We will save a new profile so you can see how this is done. All configuration updates take effect when the monitor page refreshes. Run the web application and navigate to the monitored page. 
data is pushed to CA App Experience Analytics. In the dxe.profile file, we can configure App Experience Analytics to either send browser metrics to only App Experience Analytics or both App Experience Analytics and CA Application Performance Management. For this demonstration, we are just sending metrics to App Experience Analytics, which is the default. By changing is APM only deployment equals false to true has the effect of sending metrics to both Application Performance Management and App Experience Analytics. We will be using our TixChange application to look at Web App Analytics. We begin by logging into CA App Experience Analytics. We see the app ranking for all applications. This section displays the top four apps for the selected metric. You can filter the applications by monthly active users, average session length, average memory use, average CPU use, data received, or data sent. We also have problematic apps for all applications. This section displays the top four applications for the selected metric. You can filter the applications by performance and stability metrics, such as crash count, average latency, and app startup time. We also have usage and performance. This section displays information about the application usage and performance at a high level. For detailed information, click the value for each metric to navigate to the analytics page. You can choose from total sessions, total MAUs, total HTTP requests, average user retention, or total page hits. The analytics for the TixChange app are viewed by clicking on the TixChange app icon. Data maps help you zoom into the application's hotspots, performance, problems and usage, and baseline threshold violations to narrow down to application-specific problems. Frequent occurrences of these violations cause the application scores to go higher. The heat map shows we have user activity from around Kansas, USA and the west coast of Africa. Problem rates displays information about the problem rates at a high level. The metrics include number of crashes, HTTP errors, average request latency, and users that were affected. Next, we will look at the app performance. The app performance page displays line graphs for the following performance metrics for the selected time period. Average request latency, HTTP requests, and HTTP errors. We will next look at the network performance by clicking on network performance. The network performance page provides insight into user sessions and business transactions that were affected by the network performance issues. This page provides the following information. URL ranking. This section displays the top four URLs ranked by the selected metric. You can filter the URLs by requests, data sent, or data received. Problematic URLs. This section displays the top four problematic URLs for the selected metric. You can filter the URLs by failure, average latency, or error rate. When you filter by error rate, you can filter the URLs by the error code. URLs list all the URLs with the following data. URL, type, indicates if the URL is a network caller or page, request, failure, average latency, and average data in and out. In this section, you can filter the URLs using the search criteria. For example, filter all the URLs that start with Google with the status code as 400. We can now see the ranking of the URL requests and highest latencies. Next, we will look at the app crashes and errors. We see here that there are no app crashes, and know from the analytics overview page that there are no HTTP errors. So we will look at JavaScript errors. As an app user, you can track and capture JavaScript errors thrown by the mobile or web apps. This information helps to get an insight into the end user issues because of the errors. You can also visualize network errors that originate from a client such as a browser. Basically, you can capture errors that occur due to asynchronous JavaScript calls to an app server, CDN, and so on. We will now look at error-specific metrics. We see there are syntax errors and select it. Looking at the distribution of syntax error shows its distribution by app, all apps, distribution by app version, single app, distribution by device and version, and distribution by platform and version. We can see under the distribution by device and version, the users have used two versions of Firefox and one version of Chrome, and the platforms they use are Windows and Linux. We now see what pages and transactions are having errors. We will now look at the app usage. What is important for our application is we can see the number of new and active users. We will now look at the app sessions page, which provides information about all sessions performed by users on the app. The line chart displays the total number of sessions during the selected time period. You can filter to display only sessions that include screenshots. Sessions are grouped into the following categories. All includes all of the app sessions, including the flagged and crashed sessions. Flagged includes app sessions that have experienced threshold alerts or crashes. The problems column indicates if the session had an alert or a crash. 
Crashed includes all app sessions that have experienced a crash during the selected time period. The session list displays the following information for all the sessions. Problems, session length, application name, platform, application version, customer ID, and time. We will select one of the sessions to show the details of that session. We can see the session information. This provides information about the application name, version, the session duration with timestamp, location, device, model, carrier, and customer ID. It also provides information about screenshots, events, HTTP requests, HTTP response, CPU usage, disk usage, and memory usage. We can see the user was in Deering, Kansas using Firefox version 38.0 on a Windows platform. We will now look at the transactions for this session. Here we see the user navigated to the shop landing page, viewed the item, and then back to the landing page. Let's look at page URLs. The page URLs show the URLs the user navigated to. We go back to all events to analyze all of the events in this session. Looking at the session app event shows us the date and time the session started in local and UTC time. We see the transaction start details here. We see the transaction name, service name, current screen name, previous screen name, and transaction start time. Looking at the network event, we see the duration, the amount of data sent and received, HTTP status, transaction, and transaction start time. The page appear event shows us the web page shown, service, screen load time, transaction start time, transaction, current screen name, and previous screen name. The page unloaded event shows us the URL and current screen name. The JS error event shows us there is a syntax error, a missing parentheses. The detail shows us the type of event, error message, previous screen name, transaction name, URL current screen name, line number, and column number. This information is good to give to the developer so they can fix the error. Next, we will look at the app transactions. The line graphs display all the transactions of an app that have crashed, errored, are incomplete, or are slow during the selected time period. This section also provides the percentage of overall success rate, crash transactions, incomplete transactions, slow transactions, and error transactions. The transaction details show us in a grid the details for each of the transactions, including the business service. Here we see the problem ratings for shop landing page. This shows us that there are a few incomplete transactions. Thank you for watching this video. For more videos, please subscribe to the CA Educate channel on YouTube. For more detailed information on CA application delivery analysis, click the information bubble in the top right corner to load the product page. From there, you can go to product documentation, visit CA communities, or see the learning path.